This is actually a really nice recipe. And it's been carefully thought out. And then you've got these pies with a filling which are actually looks like they've got more starch in them than a loaf of bread would have. Well, for sure. <laughs> Absolutely, for sure. I think Simon just said slurry, which is kind of a pretty good description. I know this medieval pigeon recipe is good, but used to such low pie standards, will a football crowd agree? Can I tempt you with one of these? You want to try? No. <laughs> that is a definite no. <laughs> so we use all the pigeon. Dear. Legs and the wings and the breasts. Give it a little blow, make sure you don't burn yourself. Mm, that's nice. Are you surprised about that? That's right, that's like duck. Look at it in there. Oh, it's lovely. The best football pie I've tasted in a long time. Fantastic. <laughs> it's pigeon. Just pigeon? Well... <laughs> <laughs> he ate the last pie, and as he's eating the pie, they score. Now, you tell me I'm not destined to cook this flipping 4 and 20 pigeons baked in a pie. So, with the ultimate seal of approval, it's on to making my pigeon pies. What I've done here is the base of my pie actually sticks with medieval tradition. This is a non-edible non pie crust. It means we're actually building the filling on the stove, filling the pie, lid on, and then send it. So now for the pie itself. Taken the legs, confit the legs. We've salted them with some herbs and spices, then wash the salt off, and then cook them in duck fat. These are cornichons, kind of small pickled gherkins. And then the car carrots, been lightly cooked, diced, and some celeriac. Again, this is following, basically following the pie filling that I made at the football ground. Got some anchovies. It's a bit unusual that we're adding the anchovies, but those anchovies will add quite a nice mouthfeel and a bit of saltiness. And now, this is something which is uh, not quite medieval, truffles. I'm going to be serving the pigeon breast, which will sit on top of this mixture. The two breasts from the pigeon, and they've been bound together, rolled, and then they've been cooked in a water bath in a seal bag. Cooking the pigeon this way, the breasts really lean. If I was to put this in a pie and bake the whole thing in the oven at the temperature required to cook the pastry, it's going to completely dry out the breasts. For me, what a lot of pies don't do is deliver contrast. They tend to be one homogenous kind of mass of meat. Making my pie this way will give a wonderful variety of textures and flavours. And now for the, for the finishing touches. Baby artichoke hearts, little baby onions. They've been cooked, but only just to the point where they lose their rawness. Then just going to add some more larger cubes of black truffle. So there's my pie. But a pie wouldn't be a pie without a lid. Breaking with medieval tradition, my lid is edible. That is my individual medieval pigeon pie.